you guys like that b-roll me making coffee it's actually a test with my new sony camera but if you clicked on this video i'm sure it's not for my coffee b-rolls but for my design expertise on your design source files welcome to the video if you're new here which i'm sure you are because as of filming this video i only have 18 subscribers yep only 18 subscribers still in this channel i mainly do freelance design tips and advice for beginners to experts and everything in between really in this video we're going to talk about what a source file is in terms of logo design and i'm also going to go into depth into what are the most important source files for design for print for digital and when you're sending over your source files to your client. Stick around to the end for a bonus tip on your source file that could save you a lot of legal trouble in the future. Without further ado, let's get right into the video. If you don't know what a source file is, a source file is the files that you, the designer, have used to create the project. The more well-known project files include Adobe Photoshop, Illustrator, and also InDesign. Obviously, that depends on what industry you're in and what you're trying to achieve with the project. A source file can also be a Premiere Pro project or also even a sketch project. Really, any type of native file that lets the client mess around with the actual project itself. These files should be provided to clients so they can print scalable versions or do whatever they want with them and even edit them as they see fit. If a client is asking for these files, it's because it's strictly written in your contract that at the end of the project, you the designer will hand over the source files to the client. If you need to know more about the legalities of source files and watch it up there, and I'll explain a little bit more about that later in the video. When you're sending a client a source file, you wanna make sure that you're sending the right file format for each purpose. So to help you guys out, I'm gonna show you exactly how to export your files to send to your client in the best and the quickest way possible in Illustrator. So let's go ahead and do that now. But before we jump into that, if you wanna see more tips and tutorials for designers and freelancers, then let me know in the comment section down below. I would actually really appreciate and really like to know your thoughts on this. Be sure to subscribe for more content just like this. All right, let's jump back into the video. So let's jump onto my computer and I can show you back on Illustrator exactly what I mean and the quickest and best way to do this. Okay guys, once we're in Illustrator, I created this really simple and easy logo just to show you and just to drive the point across. The first thing you want to do when you're in Illustrator is make sure that you're in CMYK color profile. The reason for this is that just in case the client decides to print out your logo, whether it be for a letterhead or for a poster or anything like that, you want to make sure that the printer that they're using has the correct color codes and looks right when they do print it. So to do this, it's very easy. File document color mode and CMYK color. Once we have that done, we wanna make a black and white one just to be sure for a monochrome version. So go to the artboard in Illustrator and using Alt or Option, I'm gonna drag and make two new copies. Okay, once we have these versions, we're gonna make sure that they're perfect whites and perfect blacks, just so that when we do print it, we have that right crisp color. So to do that, go over to properties and then change the color from there in the color wheel. Now, obviously this depends. If you don't want to give your client a CMYK color profile, then don't. If you want to give them an RGB, then you know where to find that. The point is that if they do end up printing it, you want to make sure that they have the right color codes. You want to make sure that the file you're giving them is the correct size and appropriate size for what they're going to be using. For this example, I'm only using a 1080 by 1080 box, and that obviously changes depending on what you're actually giving them. I wouldn't use this size for a favicon, for example, but it's just for the purpose of this video. And then to actually export it, you're going to want to go to File, Export, and then Export for Screen. The shortcut for that if you're on a Mac is Option Command E. Once we're here, we want to make sure that we click every single image that we want to export and we also want to make sure that we're exporting to the correct folder. This will be extremely easy for the client once they're all together. The easiest way to bulk export every setting that you need or every file format that you need is to go over to the format section and create every version that you think the client will need. Usually I like to involve a PDF, a PNG, and a SVG file format. We're gonna rename our artboards so we know that which one is which and it makes it extremely easy for the client once we hand over the files. Once we're done with that, we're gonna click export and see how it turned out for us. As you see, Illustrator created subfolders for us that neatly puts all the files into the correct file formats. We can rename the 1x to PNG so that the client knows exactly what the PNG file format is. Once that's done, we're gonna to wanna to send the files to the client and we're gonna to wanna to do that in a zip file format. For this, I'm gonna also include the source file itself in the folder to make sure that the client has everything they need and passing on to another designer if they need to do that. Once we have all the files in the correct folder, you just gonna to wanna to compress it and then we can send it by email or Dropbox or anything that is easiest for you. As 
I've said in the video, it really depends on what file you need to give to your client for what purpose. However, giving them these three options gives them a pretty broad range for files to use. Also, by including the source file, it makes it easier for them to export any new files if they need that in the future. I'll have a cheat sheet on screen now for all the files that you can use or what are the most preferable files for each format. That should be on screen right about now and also I'll leave a link in the description for the original version and to the credit of the person who made it. To give you guys a quick tip that can save you a lot of legal trouble down the line, I want to make sure that you know that it's okay to withdraw the rights to give the client the source file to the project that you just did. When a client hires you to create a project, they hire the final files, not the source file itself. So you can actually hold that for yourself and charge extra for that file. You can also license that to other clients and I've gone really, really deep into this into one of my last videos and I'll link that up there. Watch that video to save yourself some future pain regarding legal troubles. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like and subscribe. It really helps out the channels I've said already. Thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you on the next video.